Um, I would like to um, first say uh, thank you very much to the ClearBank team for being here with me today. Um, and we're going to talk about how uh, the fintech ClearBank leverages open source to accelerate crypto payments through uh, their cloud API and infrastructure. I'm James McLeod, Finos Director of Community. Thank you everybody for being at our event today. It's good to see so many friendly faces from Finos members and also new faces from people who have found us here today. But firstly, I'd like to introduce you to Stephen Hawkins, um, Head of DevOps Transformation at ClearBank. So Stephen, maybe you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your history. Yeah, of course, yeah. So um, yeah, Steve Hawkins, I, I work for ClearBank. Um, uh, I've been at ClearBank for just over four and a half years, so a large part of uh, ClearBank's journey, uh, just before we had our first live customers. It's been a, been a very, uh, very big roller coaster ride of growth and innovation. Uh, before that, I, I was at um, Hiscox, an insurance company. Before that, I was at Nationwide, Bill Society. So my career path's been in financial institutions, financial services, fintechs the whole time. Um, and through that, um, they've always been either you know, configuration management, engineers, uh, then moving into infrastructure uh, engineer, then moving into DevOps engineer, into that sort of space. So the tool set has generally been open source and some paid for services as well. That's fantastic. And it's um, so great to have a fintech, you know, as part of our discussion today. Um, as people know, we have a lot of enterprise uh, banks uh, within the foundation, and I'd really like to explore, you know, the differences between uh, a fintech and also an enterprise bank. So maybe, Stephen, can you tell us a, a little bit more about ClearBank um, and the services provided to fintechs, crypto platforms, banks, and credit unions? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, the, the key thing is um, uh, we, are, we are a fintech. We are, our biggest department is engineering. So we are hugely mindset focused towards uh, innovation, driving um, differentials uh, for our customers and, and, and key part growth. Um, but we are a, a fully licensed, regulated, audited bank. You know, we have that license. We provide FSCS protected accounts to our customers. Uh, and, and we have to face off with the same regulatory compliance concerns as, as you know, NatWest, HSBC, all the other big players. Um, so, so although we are, you know, we like, we always portray that we are a, a fintech, we are absolutely a, a bank at the same time. Absolutely. And so <clears throat> what is it that sets ClearBank as a fintech aside, you know, to a, a large scale enterprise bank? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. So, I mean, we've started like uh, six years ago was the, the, the start date. And so I say I've been here for a vast part of the journey. Uh, and um, with that fintech mindset, we, we go towards um, cloud-based technologies. We go towards moving our um, code base forward as quickly as we can, as often as we can. Um, and we, we offer all of our services up via a single API. So we want to make that interaction with those um, banking services as well as um, transactional solutions uh, as easy as possible for our customers. Um, so the kind of customers we're looking for are you know, EMIs, they are also bigger banks, but they are fintechs that are looking to streamline that solution for, for their end customers. Amazing. And so as part of your um, role within leading DevOps um, within uh, at ClearBank, um, can you explain maybe some of the open source tool chains that you're using as part of your automation and DevOps um, strategy? Yeah, sure. Um, maybe it helps if I start by um, explaining a bit about like, the, the area and structure that I, I work with in ClearBank. So uh, we, we, we firmly follow the idea of team topologies. So we have um, stream aligned teams which focus on delivering those, those end user products out. Uh, and then we have uh, enabling teams and platform teams. So, so that's, that's my main focus, is looking at enabling teams to figure out the frictions for those product, streamlined product teams, and then also those platform teams that are building the underlying infrastructure to, um, again, enable those teams. Uh, so if, if I just focus on one of the main areas I look, at, um, look after their uh, infrastructure, uh, we want to make sure that's um, completely compliant, secure, um, uh, has high performance and quality, um, but it must change quickly as our products change. Uh, so we, we're a massive um, uh, user of Terraform. Um, so if, I, if we're linking in the open source community, um, I think Terraform are one of the better um, uh, examples of how you can blend both uh, an open source offering, which is outstanding, along with a paid for and um, a licensed offering as well. Uh, so 
we use Terraform and Infrastructure for Code to build all of our um, infrastructure, so no, no hands touch production. Um, uh, and yeah, we're, we're a huge contributor back then to, to those. So we're, we're, um, we're using Azure as our cloud service provider, as the main one. Uh, and I think if you look at the top contributors, um, a few of our engineers are, are up there with the Azure Terraform provider. So I understand that ClearBank is also regulated. Um, so you're accountable to your customers in the same way as any other um, bank within uh, financial services industry. So with your use um, of Azure and uh, the public cloud or the hybrid cloud, how do you make sure that you, know, you are hitting those governance and compliance uh, obligations um, when moving in, the, in those circles? How do you provide evidence towards that? Um, okay, yeah, sure. So we are kind of hybrid because there are a few payments um, devices which have to be physical. HSMs, they, will, they have to be physical, although you can get that device up in um, a public cloud. Uh, the, the, the rules around how you engage them require it to be physical. Um, but the, yes, uh, as far as um, uh, our, our Azure build out, uh, which is mostly public and that, that private one, uh, compliance is our, is our top priority. Um, security, safety, but also speed. The way we um, assure that is, like I say, we, we, we don't have any hands touching production, so we've made sure all our infrastructure changes are via a pipeline. Uh, that pipeline is automated with many gates in it, um, uh, so we can do compliance checking on the type of code we're releasing, the type of open source packages we're, we're using in that, in that chain. Um, but also we, we, we encourage individuals to become better at um, things like security, QA, become champions of them. So we've got some quite good internal programs where we can develop those individual skill sets to, to do pull request reviews on the security side. Um, so yeah, we very much include not just technology as a compliance check, but people. Um, Probably an, another benefit of the, the size of ClearBank against its status as well. So we're, we're not we're trying not to have a huge amount of people in the organisation to to what we're trying to achieve. Um, is that the the people which are facing off with the regulatory concerns in the organisation aren't just auditors that then go to a, an SME. That they're auditors, SMEs, and the actual engineers that are going to be building these products. <clears throat> so we can have a lot more. Um, technical conversation with regulators on what exactly they're trying to cover and, and secure for our end users. Um, and they have, therefore we can hopefully, and I, I, I truly believe we've done this, and we've actually got better compliance than I've seen at some previous organizations I've worked with because of that automated check, because of that cultural buildup of education as well. So with your um, relationship with the regulators and kind of being able to provide uh, evidence to them, both um, as a firm, but also as engineers within the team, um, are you finding that the regulators are actually wanting more automation of regulation? Um, are they asking for evidence you know, uh, in an automated way as code or as a particular standard? There's definitely been change in, in that way, but I, I, yeah, I would like to see better automation asks from the regulator. So the, the way we show evidence generally has been interviews or screenshots or, or those sort of things. I would much, I'd much prefer it see move towards the, this is the output of my, um, my, my, my pipeline results or the quality gate checks or things that have actually been stopped on its way through. Um, it would be much better if we could somehow get get that information which is readily available directly to the regulators rather than having to do things like screenshots, create, create attestations and send those back. That's fantastic feedback. Um, so within Finos, we have a special interest group called Regulation Innovation, um, which is actually uh, created to speed up that relationship between engineering teams and the regulators. It will be awesome you know, to have ClearBank come and you know, talk about um, how uh, regulation and also engineering could be accelerated, you know, from your perspective, you know, what those blockers are and, you know, what kind of tools could actually be provided to enable, you know, more efficient types of DevOps engineering. Uh, absolutely. And um, I mean, DevOps is there to try and make movement in product faster and realize that value to our customers faster. And I mean, just listening to a couple of the conversations earlier, I was really excited hearing Jennifer talk about digital dollar, um, you know, this whole um, uh, uh, central bank digital currencies uh, and how they're going to interact with fiat currencies is incredibly interesting. And if we don't get that speed up of um, uh, regulatory output, if we don't have that connection between different jurisdictions regulations, 
it's just going to really slow down that part of the world, which I think is incredibly exciting. Um, I mean, ClearBank are, are quite heavily focused on you know, what does digital assets, stablecoin, the central bank digital currencies mean uh, for our end users? How can we best turn that into products for them to leverage and so on? So, so yeah, I, I really want to catch up with Jennifer and, uh, and, and a lot today, Ron. Yeah, that's fantastic. <clears throat> So I'm really pleased to see the ClearBank as a GitHub organization. Yeah. Um, so if people want to check it out, if you go to github.com forward slash ClearBank, you know, you have a clear presence online. Um, it's also good to see that you have repos within there and you also have repos with stars. Um, and you also publish all of your um, uh, API integration documents in there. So with your um, commun community facing kind of approach uh, for ClearBank, how has having your documentation presented to the open through GitHub enabled you to be able to integrate with your customers? Do you, do you mean why we, why we choose GitHub Pages yeah, specifically yeah. Or, the, so or the API documentation? Has there, has there been any kind of clear advantage having your API documentation you know, and, and repositories you know, that enable authentication on GitHub for people to use? Um, I mean, the accessibility, uh, the reason why we use GitHub is that, that wonderful um, tool set it has around getting the community to engage, issues being raised, issues being tracked, the whole PR um, process, and, and I guess that, that's how you get a pulse check on the health of a project is how quickly they're being passed through. So having our API documentation on GitHub uh, pages was, was twofold. One, we had the, the repository in GitHub anyway. Um, GitHub pages and GitHub actions are something we, we, we make heavy use of, and uh, it, it made sense that we had you know, GitHub in the title of our API docs. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know, all of our products are sold via an API, um, so the, the end customer really is the engineers in, 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 the, uh, in the company that are, uh, are using the ClearBank API. So it makes sense that we, we advertise that we're on GitHub, and uh, that's the first thing they see. That's fantastic. Um, and staying within you know, the open source uh, world, what have been your successes, challenges, and lessons learned you know, since publishing um, either a project in a repo or your documentation you know, through GitHub pages? Um, yeah, it goes back to that pulse check on a project. I think um, we are fast paced. We're growing in that, in, that, in that quite quick rate. We've got some really good investment behind us. So we're starting to have better um, uh, manpower to, or, or people power to, um, to, to look after these projects. So um, I think, I think that's, the, that's the biggest challenge, is when you start putting something out there, um, especially if it's, if it's not just a fork which you're contributing to someone else's project, it's your project you're putting out there. If you don't look after that open source community by responding to issues in the right amount of time, with um, especially if someone's, I mean, contributing issues is, is, is a great plus for open source. Contributing a code change to fix an issue, that's, that's even bigger, so that use of someone else's time. So if you're not respecting that by um, reviewing that PR, giving the constructive feedback, and ultimately, hopefully, merging it into your, your project in time, that that's, that's the biggest um, uh, pain point, I'd say, for any open source project. So have you had the scenario where an external kind of member of the open source community has either raised an issue, opened a pull request, you know, watched your repos or starred them? Is there, you know, a feedback loop that kind of goes through the open source community? It exactly is that, yeah. Um, this is it. We're getting a real chance to understand what the customers think, um, where they have complete free reign to do it any time of the day and any which way they want to, to feedback on issues on the project. So, so. It is the biggest plus, um, and it is uh, the, the best way of getting to understand how your product's actually being used. So knowing that we have a financial services community um, in open source here, I mean, what can Finos or the wider financial services industry kind of like provide ClearBank in order to make your contributions to open source, you know, even more successful? Maybe we go back to, um, I, kind of, I don't want to quite completely flip it around, but if we go back three years ago, we were a very early stage at ClearBank when we first met. Um, it definitely felt like a luxury item for us then to become a member of Finos, and we, we didn't truly understand what was, what was, what was the driving, what was the, like, the main goals, the driving force for Finos. Obviously, you've approached this again more recently. We've got this funding. This is much more attainable to be a member now. Um, but... Uh, the biggest thing I think um, anyone out in, in this room can do for us is, is, is look at the projects we've got. Um, 
use them if they're beneficial, uh, come back with feedback on new feature requests for them, uh, or, um, uh, or, or contribute to them it would be amazing. Uh, I, I must carry that obviously the, the, the things we're releasing on our GitHub pages are more internal tools to, to help build infrastructure for financial services to get compliance, those sorts of things. So it's, it's, not, it's not the actual ClearBank products uh, available to, to, to pick apart from there. But, yeah. It was um, really interesting to see Declan earlier in the keynote talk about NatWest's approach you know, to also publishing documentation around their APIs as well. And so um, clearly uh, having API documentation in the open is you know, a way forward. Um, uh, so tell me um, about the engineering team at ClearBank. Um, what's a day in the life of you know, a ClearBank engineer? How do they operate? How do they collaborate? You know, how do they solve problems? Uh, so we, had, we actually use Azure DevOps mostly internally for source control, workflow, pipelines, um, rather than GitHub for our internal uh, 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 source code and, and um, pipelines. So that's their main point of interaction. Uh, but we also have created something called a developer portal which is, um, it was an idea started with Spotify, and it's a great way of getting those kind of um, uh, announcements put out across the floor. So if you wanna tell uh, an engineering team that a, an end of life for something is coming up, it's a great way of putting it out there on a, on a tech radar and moving it to retire. So, so we, have, we, ha we don't have any sort of architecture um, people, roles in the organization, but we do have architectures forums so we try and get our engineers to, to contribute their, you know, their, their, their um, friction points in their day-to-day -day life through that forum. So as a group, we can collaboratively find the best way to, to move it forward for everyone. Because more than likely, if one person there, one team in our group has got a problem, it's probably the same for someone else. Um, the, as far as open source goes, um, I, I, I would like to see more open source um, uh, contributions uh, from, from the wider floor. But also, I understand that there's a lot of focus on product delivery from our, from our engineers. So I think most of the open source side of, the, of, of ClearBank's engagement will be that platform and enabling team. Absolutely. <clears throat> so with one of the conversations that we had earlier uh, in the foyer, um, we were talking to, to GitHub about how they could potentially remove friction for regulated um, clients of theirs. If um, GitHub or other people who are supplying tooling um, for open source firms within the regulation industry could remove, you know, friction for you. You know, what would that be? Do you have any examples, you know, of how things could be made a lot more easier for you to be able to contribute to open source? Uh, yeah, I, well, to con consume open source, I've seen problems in, in other organizations where there's, there's almost a, 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 a risk problem there. Uh, is that project going to be there going forward? Um, uh, uh, those sorts of things. So. I think if we can somehow, uh, and, and we, we take a risk-based approach on taking on any product, supplier or open source led. Um, so you, know, you look at, is there a corporation backing up this open source product or is it a publicly owned one? Um, are there, you know, are you seeing pull requests and issues being addressed in a timely manner? That helps you with the risk profile of what you're taking on. If, if we could, if Finos or, or, or someone else was able to um, help uh, financial services uh, bring that risk down even further, that, that would be a, a huge enabler, I think, for financial services. Um, if we can look at it in the same light of saying, you know, uh, this, this, it, it's, it's going to be supported, we're not going to be left in hot war, we're not going to have to look after this ourselves, there's a group of people that can help us maintain it. Uh, if, anything, if the worst does happen, that would be the, a huge enabler, I think. So um, earlier you were talking about how ClearBank, you know, looked at Finos maybe three years ago. I mean, when we met uh, just before the pandemic um, and it was a nice to have. Have you had the opportunity to look at any of the other Finos projects or special interest groups? You know, and what's your appetite now, you know, for getting involved in, in a foundation like Finos? Uh, like I said, we've got the, the, the bigger investment now, so the, it's, it, it's much more attainable for us to become a full member of Finos. Um, where I see the benefit is um, seeing, uh, a, a, there's a couple of compliance, you know, whether it's asset management, whether it's um, uh, service catalogs, I've seen a few of those repositories in there, and they're, they're things that we're, we've, we've either got paid for supplied uh, products to look after, or um, it's, it's, it's something we've built into house ourselves. Um, uh, so. Uh, yeah, I see compliance as something that the, um, the financial services world needs to band together on 
to make sure it's more um, consistent across all organizations. Uh, like I say, it sometimes feel like we're treated as a fintech, so we, we, we've got a slightly different risk profile. It's, 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 it's clearly not the case, but it'd be very interesting to see how um, some of the more incumbent financial institutions, which have been you know, around for a lot longer, going through this process for a lot longer, how they deal with um, compliance and, and how aligned are we? So within the fintech industry, not necessarily clear banks specifically, um, for us to be able to invite you know, the wider fintech and maybe crypto um, world into open source and into Finos, what would be kind of like the main hangups and hurdles that we would need to overcome in order to invite more people in? Um, transparency. Uh, absolutely, of, of what's on offer, uh, as in uh, what, what, what the what the you know, what the goal is for Finos, but also what the success criteria is for you know the next six, twelve, twenty-four months. You know, what's the roadmap for Finos? What is what is the um, driving force for, for for the whole group getting together, and, and why 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 new people should come in? Uh, I think that was, that's critical because for us, again, we, we saw it as a luxury item uh, initially, and and we also didn't quite understand exactly what it was about. I um, mean, you know, at first, our first initial thoughts was, is this, is this open source or is this closed source, honestly? So we weren't, we weren't really sure. Um, but obviously, meeting again, it's very clear that this is about um, trying to erode those um, misconceptions within um, maybe older or larger organizations that, that open source is a bigger risk, which it's not. It's just another risk, like yeah. all the other products. So that's fantastic. So I'm pleased that, you know, being here today and also, you know, speaking within, you know, our previous conversations has helped to start remove those. And maybe we can um, do a lot more to invite other fintechs and other players, maybe challenger banks, um, into, into Finos as well. Can I, can I ask around a different question then from, from my side? Like, well, what, what can ClearBank do for Finos uh, to, you know, what's the how can we make Finos successful through clear bank engagement? What's, what's the biggest thing we could do? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. So within Finos, um, we have a number of different projects, you know, that may be of use to you, you know, that we, we may need to take you through and kind of um, introduce you to our catalog of projects that you can leverage. Um, we are, um, you know, creating compliant cloud services, um, which may be of, of use and value. Um, plus, we also have uh, associate members such as the EDM Council and CDMC that also um, work with us to make sure that we're creating those services in a compliant way. So by um, getting involved in such projects and even by just you know, communicating your perspective on the work that we're doing can actually build, um, it, it will enable our roadmap and could also influence how features are actually created you know, in, in a great deal of um, our projects. But even outside of projects where there are main uh, co-contributions, we also have special interest groups, um, which are open for everybody within financial services to get involved, whether you're a bank, whether you're a fintech, whether you are a consultancy or a tech provider, in order to give industry points of view um, and help um, prioritize what the issues are of the moment. Um, so the Regulation Innovation SIG, as um, we were talking about earlier on stage, has helped um, bring in four new projects around regulation in order to um, help describe regulation and also accelerate uh, the relationship between engineering and also the regulators. Um, we also have Open Source Readiness, um, which is about educating banks and other you know, regulated firms within finance about how they can actually join the open source community um, and how they create policies, uh, talk to compliance teams and you know, governance teams in order to you know, bring both um, all sides of the bank on the journey of open source, including engineers. And then you know, many of the banks that we have here are uh, applying DevOps, um, sorry, not DevOps, in a source within their banks that also includes DevOps. And so if you've got any kind of different perspectives of how engineers can work together on the inside of organizations, please bring it in because the more points of view that we have, you know, from different sides of financial services, the better because we can all learn off of each other. And there isn't one single answer either. And so the more perspectives you have in things, um, the better kind of like and also more successful the projects are. So you can bring in a whole new uh, perspective to everything that we're doing. Excellent. So, so what does success look like next three, six, 24 months for uh, Finos? 
Yeah, so that is also a great question. So we have um, a governing board that helps um, create our OKRs. Um, so at the moment, top of the list is bringing the regulators and also the banks together. Um, so automation, automating all of that evidence, um, trying to do regulation as code, writing regulation that can be published, you know, across multiple different um, exit points into, you know, different systems and services. Uh, we also want to make sure that all of our various different projects um, join together. So, you know, where within our journey into open source, we've had lots of uh, successful projects contributed into the foundation. We want to make sure that those projects are joining together so they actually build an ecosystem that people can actually bring on board and you'll find that projects such as Legend, which is uh, a project contributed by Goldman, is being leveraged by Morgan Stanley and is also being integrated into their project, which is called Morfer. And so all of these different touch points within Finos are also being like technically and also system architected. So we have you know, cross collaboration across all of the various different firms. And then we're just going to multiply that across the years. So you know, bring on more vendors, try and break down more barriers, remove silos, and bring people together in a more open and collaborative way. I, I like the sound of this uh, engagement with the regulators. Like I say, I feel like we've had a very different experience than I've had at previous organisations. So if we can have that joined up uh, experience and actually have them uh, in the same room as, as, a, as, a, in, as a group of uh, financial services, that would be a very interesting place. Yeah, so as um, associate members, we have the Alliance for Innovative Regulation who are bringing in you know, the regulators, so we're working in partnership with them. Uh, we have the Canadian RegTech Association, which um, are, are doing pretty much what we were just talking about, you know, speeding um, up regulation as code, you know, through engineering, all the way from the cloud platform through to inner banking infrastructure. Um, we also run meetups, so, you know, we come together in conferences, but we also come together um, in... Uh, more federated, you know, meetups within different um, cities and locations, you know, where we talk all of this stuff through. So uh, last month we were in New York City, which was RegTech um, uh, themed. Uh, previously we were in London and we were talking about Walt. And then previous to that, we we're also in New York um, talking about uh, compliant financial infrastructure. Plus we also have meetups in Edinburgh, Bristol, Leeds, um, and London as well, you know, that we run on an ongoing basis. So there's plenty of um, time to get together with, you know, the Finos community. Excellent. I'm, I'm where we've been talking with each other a lot. Are we open up to questions as well? Or? I think so. We've just had the minute marker, but um, if people have got questions, feel free to just shout them out. I don't think we've got time to, for people to put hands up. So, Phil, yeah, feel free to... So you mentioned that... Um, so I imagine those those organisations have good, uh, quite robust functions around procurement, uh, around audit. Uh, like I say, for the size of organisation we are, um, procurement audit is is the the day job of the leader of that area that's reporting back. Um, and I said that's got its benefits um, because we've got direct conversations with engineers uh, and and the, the the regulatory body we're we're trying to comply with. Um, so I would say break down the barriers, bring as many of the people actually building, designing the products and architecture that need to be compliant in the room with those, those regulators. Um, try, try and stop any sort of Chinese whispers of, 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 of translation from regulation to what it is you're actually doing on the floor. That's actually a really good question, and one that both myself and Miklos um, have been breaking down um, a lot within bigger banks as well. Right, I think we're at the end of our time, so if the people at the back can just confirm that we're there now. We are. I'd like to say thank you to everybody for being here today and thank you, Stephen, for um, such an insightful fireside chat. It's been great speaking to you and I look forward to working with Clearbank a lot more. No, me too. It's been great. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>